Hi there, my name's Ben and I like to read. Today we're going to be reviewing Ivo Andrich's book, The Bridge on the River Drina. Ivo Andrich was a Yugoslav writer. He was born in the city of Travnik in, I believe it was 1892. He won the Nobel Prize in the 1961 for literature. I believe he was the first and to date only um, South Slavic um, author to do so. Uh, so this book, again, chronicles the uh, his hometown, and which is situated on the banks of the river Drina in Bosnia. And essentially it encompasses a period of about 400 years from when the Turkish vizier uh, Mehmed Pasha Solokovic, who was from that area, decided and was taken away from his mom by the Turks and, you know, converted to Islam, forcibly converted to Islam, made to serve as a soldier for the Ottomans and so on and so forth. He comes back, this newly powerful minted guy, and he says, you know what, okay, I'm going to build a bridge up in this joint so that way I can see my family again. And the book itself spans the construction of the bridge and how the bridge essentially becomes a central point to the to the different characters who inhabit the region. Uh, there are, you know, some some sequences in there, like, again, that are a little bit of the supernatural. Like, you have the gambler man who's there. He plays his last game of dice, but his opponent is the devil. Uh, you also have some fairly grisly, um, like, you know, legends and stuff about, you know, like, there is a... Um, uh, an, an impalement scene in the book. There are, like, you know, for some people who were essentially trying to revolt against building the bridge. Uh, you have the story of the mother who, of a mother who resisted and the local, uh, the local Lord decided to imprison her two babies within the wall, but left a little mouth opening so that she could feed them. Uh, but all of these are not, are not necessarily gruesome. They're, they're handled in a very, very poetic way. And the main character of this book, of course, is the bridge itself. And you can see how it becomes a symbol of liberation as, or a symbol of oppression, uh, how it becomes essentially the bridging force between these new overlords and the local population, but also the bridge between the communities because you get, you know, Christians, Jews, Muslims, they're all living in this small community. They're all connected by the bridge. The city prospers because of it. And then of course, Again, the liberation aspect is key because even though it was built by, you know, an, a foreign oppressor in near the end of the book up until, like, you know, which, which ends around 1914 after the assassination of Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, uh, the bridge is actually used by the culprits to escape into Serbia, thereby starting the First World War and ending the book. So it does become a bit of liberation as well. Um, of course, this isn't written originally in English. It was initially written in uh, Serbo-Croatian, you know, depending on whether or not you want to call it Serbian or Croatian. Um, and again, it, it reads very, very well. I believe this translation, who is it by? It doesn't really matter. Anyway, translation's good. Um, it reads very, very well. Like I said, it's, it's handled almost, it's very, it's very poetic in that sort of sense, full of symbolism. Uh, some people sort of like, were sort of calling down on Andrich's name, saying like, oh, well, I mean, it's it's a little too poetic. It's a little, his writing is a little bit too much grandstanding. And again, like his, uh, his award for the Nobel Prize was controversial given the circumstances. Uh, that being said, I think it's fully well-deserved. Um, this book is, you know, very, very, um, it's powerful. I don't know. I, re I read it first when I was a young boy, and then I reread it recently, and it's just you can you can feel the pain that was written in there. You can feel the pain not just from those centuries of of conquest, but also you can you can feel the love that the community that grew together, you know, felt for each other, and it it really it's a powerful book in the sense that because Andrich hopes that we can bridge that divide between religions, we can bridge the, the divide between language, we can bridge that divide, that in spite of those differences, we can all sort of coexist and get along, because, hey, even in, in spite of being, you know, under, under a foreign oppressor, the community thrived, and they thrived together because essentially they were all in the same boat. 
Um, it's a pretty short book. I would say it's probably around like 300 pages. Um, now, again, with most Slavic literature, it does have a tendency to get a little dense, and that's in no fault due to the translation. It's just certain languages just read differently than others. And when you're trying to translate it into one language, which, like, you know, like Russian or, or from the Russian, I should say, or the Serbo-Croatian into English, there's a lot of, of linguistic flourishes that are easier to pull off in those Slavic languages than they are in English, and of course vice versa. Um, but that being said, I, I would recommend the book. It's a, it's a solid read. It's not too long, which means it's not too dense. Um, and again, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in learning about that part of the world, I would say pick it up. Like it's, a, it's a solid book. I enjoyed it. Uh, that being said, if you're not really one for like historical fiction, if you just don't really care about that about that part, and it's not really something that you're that you're into, you can skip out on it. Uh, that said, I think that it's it's an important book. I think that it really does show it, it's it's full of symbolism and it, it's full of power as well. And I think that it that that alone makes it a great candidate for reading. But anyway, let I, I suggest I suggest to read it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.